Hello there, Della. Welcome to the video looking at uh, number 2.6 in the introductory course. This is all about drawing in orthographic and we're going to talk specifically about the camera. I know I had some requests for actually putting this together. I've done the tutorial a couple times in class, but here's a recorded version for you. Now, this camera is drawn in isometric and it gives you all of the actual measurements that you need. Now, in my particular drawing, I'm going to make an executive decision here that these uh, units are all millimeters and I'm going to actually draw my drawing in centimeters just to make things a little bit simple here. So where I have a diameter of 50 millimeters here, I'm going to actually draw this as five centimeters instead. Just so you know when everything's divided by 10, that's the reasoning here. Now, I'm going to do this in the web app. So we get into our AutoCAD web app and we're actually going to go ahead and start a brand new drawing, call it camera and, uh, ortho, and we're actually going to start drawing this. Now, the key thing that you need to know in orthographic, in this version of orthographic, is that we're going to be using our orthographic tracking and our polar tracking specifically quite frequently here. Now, what that means is that I can actually set my polar dimensions here. I'm going to set them to 90 degrees right off the hop. And what that's going to do is when I'm drawing a line, it means I can snap to have it be exactly 90 degrees or exactly vertical in this case. I guess in this case, zero degrees and 90 degrees in this case. And what that's going to do is it's going to let us actually create things so that we can actually base one drawing off of another. So if I have a rectangle already here, I can actually float over the corner and I can actually follow the extension line out to line things up. Now let's see what this looks like in the camera. In the camera, we are going to turn around and go to our layers and we are going to create a new drawing layer. It's probably the only layer that I need. Uh, and I'm going to make it a nice bright color that we can all see. We're going to go with this nice bright blue right here. Okay, and that is going to allow us to start our drawing. Let's start in our drawing layer. Let's go ahead and let's put on our first rectangle. Now, obviously, I'm going to go ahead and have this drawing open in my second window, and I recommend that you do too. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have two screens running right now, and we're going to take full advantage of both of those and actually use that to our advantage. Now, I'm going to draw the front aspect of this, and I know from this that the front aspect is 10 millimeters wide by, uh, I'm going to start with uh, six millimeters, sorry, six centimeters. Tall. Now you notice that showed up really small. Again, I can go up to my zoom extents button and zoom in on what I've already done. Now I started this at six millimeters or six centimeters tall. Um, the whole thing is actually five centimeters plus another one centimeter block on top of it. But the actual cylinder for the lens is centered right in the middle of this six millimeters, if the uh, drawing is correct. That being said, I'm going to go down to my uh, actual object tracking here. Uh, sorry, my uh, object snap, and I'm going to make sure my geometric center is on, okay? Some of you may not have this by default, and if you don't, you should probably have it. Let's draw our circle. I'm going to use the geometric center of this particular rectangle. I'm going to put it in at six centimeters across. Grab that, five centimeters across. Okay, and obviously that drew a radius, not a diameter. Oops, try again. Okay, let's click here. In this case, I can actually go down and click diameter on the bottom. Now that I have diameter, I can actually just type it in the way I want to. Okay, there's the front aspect, nothing wrong with that. Now the next piece is I've got a bar that is one centimeter down from the top in this case. So I'm just gonna very quickly use a construction line here, okay, and then I'm gonna run another line directly, uh, horizontally um, across. And that is gonna allow me to delete this construction line and have my drawing the way I want it to. I do need to trim something, so I'm gonna use the trim command to trim away the middle of this line. And now I have most of this front of my camera. Now everything that's on top of the camera, if we look here, is a bunch of rectangular prisms, or not quite rectangular prisms, and a cylinder. All of those are going to show up as rectangles in this particular drawing. So I'm going to do some uh, wizardry with some numbers here. I'm not going to explain them too uh, heavily here, except to know that I'm using construction lines for a large part of this. Okay, and I just realized that this line I put in here is actually twice as tall as it's supposed to be. It is only supposed to be half of a centimeter or five millimeters. So we're gonna put a 0 0.5 here, we're gonna put a one across, we're gonna go back down, we're gonna take another construction line across here, and I know that this one is gonna be 3.5. We're gonna go straight up by one because that's what the design says, across by three and back down by one. Now, the cylinder on the right-hand side is sometimes a little bit tricky for people, but I know that it has a center point at 15 millimeters, so in this case, 1.5 centimeters. It goes straight up 0 0.5, and then since it is a cylinder, I can just use the radius on it, which is 
10 millimeters, one centimeter in each direction. And then from here, I just have some lines I need to clean up. Don't need this line anymore. Don't need this line anymore. Don't need this line anymore. And don't need this line anymore. Now I've got the front of my camera. Now that's not the orthographic piece. That's a front view, very nice front, front view. The orthographic piece comes in when we actually start using our extension lines by floating over a side of this camera and actually starting to do the drawing with those 90 degree angle lines. And this is going to allow us to actually draw the rest of the camera relatively simply so that everything lines up. If I want to line up my lens, for example, I'm just going to draw a line straight up and across here. Same thing on the bottom, line straight down and across here. Okay, I know my lens is going to be two centimeters in projection. I'm going to click here, I'm going to click here, and then we're going to go about trimming some lines. Okay, trim away uh, that line, that line, and then the rest of these lines here that I created as construction lines, we can just do a delete job on them to make them go away. I probably have one extra line there, yes I do. Now I know that I can actually draw the tops of these as well. The only, uh, the two pieces I will see are going to be the uh, cylinder, which is relatively easy because it is already here. Now we're going to get really lazy on this. I'm actually just going to copy this cylinder because I know that it is round. I know that it's going to show up the exact same way I have it here from the side view as it is from the top view. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to specify my base point at the base of the cylinder. You'll notice that now I can move another version of this cylinder right over and line it up with the dead center here and then it is done. Easy enough. I've got a top piece of this camera I can go ahead and draw and I know from the drawing that it is three, uh, sorry, one centimeter tall. I know that it has a line running from the front of it that is 45 degrees, which I can actually type in here, but I don't know how long that line is. So I'm gonna overshoot. I'm gonna go past where I'm supposed to and then I'm gonna draw another line from here and I'm simply gonna draw it across until they intersect and trim away the excess. This is also the point where I find out when I dimension this or I measure it that I actually have a top of, ooh, my dimension lines are weird. I'm gonna go to my properties and I'm gonna change my text style to standard and my dim style to standard. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and measure this again and just see what I get here, here to here. Okay, ooh, appear to not have a dimension. There we go, let's try this again. Click, click the right space there, snap to the corner, snap to the corner, and there we go. Oh, hey, look at that. It's exactly two centimeters out. That's neat. That's going to help us later. Okay. Um, now let's do the top of this camera. Again, same thing. I'm going to use my uh, projections here to actually just create a drawing that's up top here. I'm going to line everything up the way it's supposed to. This is three units deep. And. Uh, now again, I have some choices here. I could either draw this straight off of this circle if I wanted to, which is probably my easiest way to do it. Here to here, and here to here, and then do a really simple, actually let's do this. Let's draw a line across here, and let's simply grab this line, and let's move it. Okay, and I'm going to move it exactly two units. I just typed in the number two units that way. That's kind of cool. It's actually gonna allow me to trim off the things I don't need very quickly here and have a lens that does what it's supposed to do. There we go. Okay, tops of this, relatively easy. Again, I'm gonna use those uh, extension lines to make sure that everything gets drawn the way it's supposed to. Okay, I'm gonna draw a construction line here. Now I know that I've got a circle here and it's lined up along this construction line and the center of this camera based on my drawing because the camera is three centimeters across and the cam the button is centered at two uh, centimeters or sorry at point one point five centimeters okay now I'm gonna get this and I know it has a radius so I'm just gonna manually half the diameter and get my number one and I'm gonna delete this okay nice and easy now I can do the same thing or many of the same things by simply following these lines back here to here and here to here to make sure that this does what it is supposed to Okay, same thing with this button here, relatively easy. Let's follow it back there to there. And obviously I'm gonna make frequent use of the trim lines here. Okay, from here I know that this thing is uh, one centimeter away from the back here. Nice construction line there. I know that it is then a one by one by one 
rectangle. I'm actually going to delete my construction lines completely, and it's going to leave me with that rectangle right there. Okay, now I know from this measurement over here that I have a line that is exactly two units from the back. So I can go two units there and straight across. And there, my friends, is your camera in orthographic. Now the cool thing about an orthographic drawing is if I go to my layers and I create a dimensioning layer, which is something you're going to need to do on this drawing, that my dimensioning layer, very uniquely, has the ability to throw some uh, neat things on here. For example, if I dimension this circle here, and I show that it has a, oh, I thought I had my diameter there. There we go. Okay, I show that it has a diameter of five. I don't need to dimension this side. I don't need this dimension here. Those are what we call redundant dimensions. They say the same thing. And because it's an orthographic, we can tell or we can assume that since that measurement there is six, that every version of that measurement, for example, here at the back of the camera, are all also going to be six. This is really effective because it means that it, whereas you might have to put this measurement on you know, a drawing two or three times, we only really have to do it once. Uh, you can actually dimension this whole drawing really, really simply. I'm gonna zoom in here and see if I can get this line and this line. There we go. There we go, a nice 45 degree angle. There we go. And we can actually see that a lot of these dimensions are quite easy to do because they are um, they only need to get used once. There's a good one right there. I'm actually just going to go ahead and finish dimensioning this drawing because we're already halfway there. All right, finish this off. I need to make sure I know how wide this is. I need to know how far away this is. I need to know how wide this is. Probably also need to know how tall this is. That might be an important dimension, like so. Okay, try not to overlap your dimensions where you can help when you can, if you can help it. Um, but that's nothing bad at all there. Okay, probably need to give a dimension as to how tall this bar is right here. I probably need to give a dimension to how tall the rest of this is, though most people could do the math on this one. Not the end of the world. Okay, um, I may need to throw on a center line here or two just to make sure that I have this all sorted so I know where the center of this is. If that's the case, you're more than welcome to put a center layer into this drawing. Okay, center layer, I'm gonna make green. And the center layer, I'm gonna make sure it's line type is center line. And that's kind of cool because that actually allows us to throw on uh, an actual center line. I'm just gonna simply draw this um, arbitrary distance, okay. And now, since it's in the center line layer, it should have a center line, um, center line uh, feeling to it. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn around and actually put this line up and go three units up. And the reason for that, very simply, is so that you can visually see that it is a center line. There we go. That is very clearly a center line. Okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab this, and I'm simply going to rotate it. Okay, uh, not cotate, rotate. Okay, let's rotate specify base point around the middle. Okay, I'm going to rotate it here, and it's going to ask me, oh, hey, that's interesting. Um, I think I need to make a copy first. Interesting. In AutoCAD, it usually, uh, AutoCAD, the desktop version, it'll actually ask you for a... Uh, ask you if you want to uh, delete the original copy or just make a brand new one. In this case, this snap is doing some weird things. Interesting. Uh, I just want to see if I have any uh, any grid snap settings on. Nope, that's exactly what I want to. Okay, I'm just going to click there. That should give me a copy. And then we can simply rotate that copy around. And there we go. Now obviously this is in the wrong spot since I've rotated it. And we can just simply move the number five out of the way a little bit. Cool. And that's going to give us the ability to actually do the rest of our dimensioning, which we do need to do to make sure that we've got something that we can tell where, well, quite frankly, everything is. And that might include dimensions from here to here. Obviously put too soon there. That does happen in CAD sometimes. Okay. And we might also want to see where, uh, for example, this line is here compared to the side just to show that it is indeed at the center. Okay, and there we go, life is good. Um, I probably at some point here need to know the overall width of this drawing. 
I probably need to know uh, the, I've already got the angle here. I potentially could put this one in if I want to. Uh, hang tight a moment. I'm just going to go quickly to the properties of this one and move this over to the dimensioning layer. There we go. Okay, I have most all of the dimensions I need on here. I might have to throw a uh, quick depth dimension onto this guy just to show that it is there. Um, I think I pretty much have everything I need now. I'm just going to do a final check here to make sure I have what uh, what I need. Oh, I might have to put a center mark onto this circle here. Uh, that might be a worthwhile endeavor. I'm just going to see. I obviously put that in slightly the wrong spot, and that's okay. It does happen. Okay, if I float over here, I can actually create a dimension like so. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. At 1.5, probably has to show that it is at center. So we're going to go ahead and draw a center line across this particular circle here. Okay, I'm going to make it nice and easy, just like I did before. Once I've got my center mark, I am going to make sure I move this out of here. Now, if you see on your drawing that there's any piece of this that you don't have a dimension for, you don't know what the dimension actually is, um, you should actually make sure that there is a dimension. It's as easy as that. Because the goal here is to create something that could be created by somebody you hand it to, okay? As, in as few dimensions as is absolutely possible. There you go. There's your camera in orthographic. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you get through that. Cheers.